was uh, wanting to talk a little bit about typewriter bags. Uh, a couple of years ago, I started to discover that you could take ultra portable typewriters and put them into laptop computer shoulder bags, uh, those kind of man bags or uh, portfolio bags, those kind of things. And uh, they make really handy ways to store your typewriters because it kind of protects them, especially the typewriters that may not have cases or bags of their own. But because it's in a bag, you can uh, put some paper in there, correction tape, whatever else you'd like to take with you when you go typing. And then you leave it uh, sitting around in a convenient location where if you want to go out, take a typewriter with you and you think you may want to be uh, writing, just grab that bag and go and everything is self-contained. I started doing this a couple years ago with, I believe it was the Brother Webster XL747. And I also did it with my Royal Mercury and more recently my Olympia SF. But now I'm starting to collect more of these bags because I have more small typewriters like the thermal typewriters and all that that all need a carrying bag. So I discovered when I went to my neighborhood Staples that they do have a lot of these laptop computer bags available, pretty good selection, but they're kind of pricey, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars or more. And there's a thrift store in the neighborhood that occasionally does have these Targus laptop computer bags that are almost ideal for this purpose of carrying really small typewriters but they don't always have those in stock but uh, I've had to find alternatives but now we get to the subject of the Smith Corona Skywriter now the Skywriter was residing in a small light blue Samsonite suitcase one of these old legacy suitcases and it had some padding foam and all this but really the size of the suitcase was a lot larger than what the typewriter was and it's a suitcase it doesn't have a shoulder strap or anything like that but I was storing that typewriter in the closet and because of the intermittent skipping problem it had I wasn't really wanting to take it out and use it as a grab-and-go typewriter but because I recently as you may have seen in a previous video I recently serviced that typewriter and made some breakthrough discoveries as to the root cause of some of the skipping and it's pretty much resolved and it's now a reliable typewriter now I've decided I need to uh, convert that typewriter to a grab-and-go style and what I did was uh, I headed back to that same thrift store this afternoon and sure enough I found a Targus bag a computer bag got a nice shoulder strap with it five dollars Yes, sir. So now the Skyrider has its own grab-and-go carrying bag. Well, with all that being said, let's go take a tour of all my grab-and-go bags, shall we? Let's start with this bag, this forest green and brown leather bag. This is probably the oldest bag in my collection. This actually, I think, belonged to my stepson when he was going to art school. I keep the uh, Brother Webster XL747 in this bag. It zippers open really nice and wide, so it's easy to get a big typewriter out. And I keep a pad of paper. This is that uh, universal writing paper pad, a thin paper uh, letter size, and I keep a correction tape cartridge in it. The actual strap didn't come with the bag. I think it had a little narrow green strap hard on the shoulder if you had a heavy typewriter. This particular strap is a much wider strap with a really nice uh, shoulder pad. I got this strap from an Army Navy surplus store here in Albuquerque and uh, paid only a few dollars for it, but it made this bag much more comfortable to carry. Just a little tip on grab-and-go typewriters is uh, when you put them in the bag, you want to put the back of the typewriter in first, like that, so that when you store the bag upright, the back of the typewriter is supporting all the weight. And of course, you want the bag to have some degree of padding to help protect the typewriter, of course. That's just common sense. Uh, but uh, once they're in the bag, these provide a really nice degree of security to these little typewriters. And I should also mention while we're at it, that, you know, there's a lot of typewriters out there, ultra portables that are highly considered, highly valued, and uh, like the Hermes Rockets Babies and the um, Smith Corona Skywriters and whatnot. But these brother typewriters are kind of undervalued, I think. They're a little heavier. 
because uh, the build quality is quite good and they're slightly bigger than a rocket or a skywriter the touch on them is a little heavier and they're just a little louder uh, than one of those other typewriters but the value that these typewriters have, I really think, is that they're really rugged and reliable. I really have rarely ever had any problems with a Brother typewriter. I had a Charger 11 that I sold to somebody, and this Webster never have had any trouble with them. They just seem to operate really well. No skipping, no, no escapement issues. So if you can put up with their slightly heavier touch and their slightly louder clanky sound and their little bit bigger, uh, heavier weight, uh, these are really good, good typewriters. Well, the next bag in the lineup is this Samsonite laptop computer bag. This is a really nice bag. It's heavy duty. It has these rugged, rubber feet on the bottom, a rubber pad. There's plenty of zippered pouches like this smaller zippered pouch up on top here. And then the main compartment is big enough to hold a typewriter like the Olympia SF. Now, this is the late 1950s version of the SF, the rounded body style. Nice typewriter, beautiful appearance, that kind of slightly heavy Olympia touch, but a really rugged typewriter, really reliable. I love it. I do keep a pack of this uh, Mead typing paper in here. Yeah, you always want to have all your accessories in the bag so it truly is grab and go, ready to go, ready to get out there and uh, type whenever you, you feel like it, whenever the moment hits. Well, those previous two bags were the only grab and go bags I had for a long time. And then when I got the Canon Type Star, I went to the thrift store and I found this Targus computer bag. And it has a nice shoulder strap. It's not padded quite as well in this, in this movable pad as the other two, but it certainly is functional. So uh, flipping it around, the Targus bags have this double zipper configuration with a uh, little loops that interlock that you can put a little padlock on if you wanted to secure it. And uh, of course I keep in here the uh, Canon Type Star. I actually have a typing pad in here, and I don't really need it because the Type Stars don't have a carriage that moves back and forth. But uh, here's the Type Star 4 typewriter. Wonderful little thermal typewriter. Great writing tool. Um, it has D cell batteries in there. Their NICADs are rechargeable. I also keep the charger with it, and the charger will recharge the NICADs internally. I also have a little Alpha Touch knife in case I'm carrying a roll of paper. I can slice the paper off. Uh, this time I'm not carrying a roll of paper. And I also carry a little Staples brand Duramark uh, marker. This is like Staples house brand version of a Sharpie marker. And I, the reason why I, I use that is because with thermal paper, if you make a mistake and you don't, uh, you don't catch it in the edit phase, you can't use correction tape. I mean, you can erase it with correction tape, but you're not going to be able to reprint over it with a thermal typewriter because the correction tape isn't thermal. So uh, I just hand write the corrections in because most of the thermal typewriting writings that I do are very much first draft writings, and they're going to be edited anyway later on. There's also a nice Velcro pouch for all your writing accessories. Here I keep a, a pack of the Brother thermal paper, this really nice 8.5 by 11 inch thermal paper. And I keep the manual for the typewriter in here, just in case I want to refer to any of the features that I've forgotten how to use. I like these Targus bags because, uh, you know, they're small uh, enough to be really portable, but they don't have the um, the bulk of the bigger bags. And so for a little thermal typewriter like the Type Star works really well with a good shoulder strap. Well, this was my first thermal typewriter. I bought this off eBay, and this is the Brother EP20, and it came with its own brown leatherette carrying bag, and it's the smallest grab-and-go bag that I have for typewriters because it's the smallest typewriter. So it has a single zipper, a little bit less convenient than a double zipper. And here is the EP20 itself with this little clamshell lid. And I keep the instruction manual for the typewriter in the bag, of course. 
Not that there's that many advanced features to the typewriter, but it is nice to refer to it. There's a secondary zippered pouch, again, a single zipper. And I tend to keep the batteries out of the machine just in case the machine is sitting for a few weeks or months. I don't want the batteries to leak. It does use D cell batteries. They are heavy, right? But there they are. I also keep another Ulfa touch knife in case I'm using roll fax paper, I can slice the paper up. And of course I keep the AC adapter handy as well. In case the batteries die, I have my AC backup to power the typewriter when I'm at the coffee shop or whatever. I'd say the only uh, limitation of this uh, typewriter bag is going to be the strap. It's a leatherette strap. It's kind of narrow. It's only maybe seven eighths of an inch wide or so. It doesn't have a shoulder pad. And uh, so it kind of feels, especially when you have the heavy D cell batteries in there, it feels like maybe you're putting a lot of weight on that strap, but it does have riveted lugs where it connects to the loop here on the stitching. So I think it's pretty durable. I haven't had any problems yet. And considering the age of this typewriter, probably from the late 1980s, uh, this bag isn't really good condition and uh, it's nice to have a bag that came with the typewriter when it was new. That's pretty cool. Well, my third thermal typewriter was the Brother EP43. By this time I had ran out of regular computer bags, uh, grab-and-go bags. I happen to have this pen brand Kind of a tennis bag. This is one of these that's made of a heavy duty kind of like a ripstop nylon or some kind of synthetic fabric and it has these uh, kind of like uh, parachute cord uh, shoulder straps. I use the term strap loosely. There's a pair of them and you can wear that on your shoulder. It has a drawstring pouch and in here I keep, well first of all, there's my little homemade cardboard and duct tape holder for the thermal fax paper. This has a pair of uh, brass tubes that fit together and it, it forms an axis or an axle that runs through the core of the paper. So this, you set behind the typewriter like this, you can feed the paper out. It's a nice little way to carry thermal fax paper. And then the typewriter itself, um, because the bag is just fabric, it has no padding at all, I made a homemade little padding bag out of the fine bubble wrap and two inch clear packing tape. If you can make your own custom size little padded bag, and in this case it's for the uh, EP43, nice little typewriter, right? Great little typewriter. I think, I think form factor wise, keyboard wise, uh, it's really my favorite. It's smaller than the Canon, has a nice keyboard though, and it's powered by C cell batteries instead of D cell batteries, which means it's not as heavy, right? That's pretty cool. So I keep the typewriter in the little padded bubble wrap sleeve, and that goes in the uh, travel bag. I also keep the manual for the typewriter in there as well, just to refer to some of the functions. You know, if I did get a better computer bag, I would probably use it, but this certainly works. It does the job. I wouldn't want to use a bigger typewriter though with it. This is about the limit. Well, this is the Targus bag that I got today at the thrift store. And you know, it's amazing. I don't know how many different styles of bags that Targus made for laptops, but <laughs> this is different than the other ones, certainly. Okay, so it has uh, numerous pockets. It has a little zippered thing right here you can put accessories in. It has another dual zippered pouch just behind that for other things, ID, pens, little papers or what, what not. And then the main zippered opening reveals this inner thick padded area. It's perfect for a Smith Corona Skywriter. Look at that. Slips right out like that. I keep a typing pad in there along with it because of course it does have a movable carriage and it will slide around on a slick coffee shop table surface. And then there is another pouch just below that that I keep some of this universal letter writing paper. 
I keep some of this uh, green engineering paper that I cut down in half if I want to do some basic note taking. And I have a reprint of the Smith Corona Skywriter manual and of course a little bit of correction tape cartridges. So all that fits in there nicely. And uh, yeah, it's amazing how nicely this Skywriter fits into this bag. It really is great. And uh, when you put the Skywriter back in here, I'm putting it of course back first, it goes into this thickly padded slick little inner pouch really nicely the articulating carriage return arm just folds right down boom just like that the other papers go right in and it really is quick to load and unload it's perfect for it i got into using these grab and go bags initially because i was running out of storage in my closet and i had these several bags and I realized if I could just put the typewriters in the bag, I could store them on the floor in a corner out of the way. And then I discovered, oh, that makes the bag and the typewriter easy to access, grab and go. That's kind of where the whole concept of grab and go came from for me. But I found since then that the the typewriter bags store quite nicely because they're padded you can put them next to each other sitting up on their back and they actually put a couple of them on top and they kind of su support each other and if you have just a narrow opening between two pieces of furniture or whatever the whole thing just stores quite nicely or in a closet or wherever the other thing i noticed is uh, i've been doing a lot of moving typewriters around because we have uh, biannual public typewriter meetings here in Albuquerque and we have our monthly Albuquerque Typewriter Society meetings so I'm always every month at least I'm moving typewriters around and I find these ultra portables that are already in their carrying bags it's just a lot easier to take them out to the car and load them up and you don't have to worry about the typewriter is being damaged or if you have to set them carefully on the seat okay. you can just put them in on the floor underneath the seats in the back they just are padded, they're protected, and with straps and handles, they're just really easy to move, and so it really makes a lot of sense. There's a logic to using ultra-portable typewriters with a grab-and-go bag, and that is there's no real better purpose for an ultra-portable typewriter than to be able to take it somewhere, right? Because they're very small, lightweight, there are intrinsic design compromises that come with an ultra-portable design. Uh, the advantage of having an ultra-portable typewriter is the very reason of portability. You have it because you can take it places easily. And this makes it even easier. Having it in a bag, ready to go with paper, correction tape, whatever else you like to use with typing, a typing pad, it just makes it so much more portable. It enhances its ultra portability, right? Otherwise, if you're going to be typing at a fixed location at home, you're really better off with a full-size standard upright typewriter or, or a behemoth like this uh, Olympia SG3 that I have, right? If you're going to be typing in one fixed location, you might as well have the best typewriter. that has the best controls, the best feel, the best touch, the most ruggedness and everything. But portability is where ultra portables are at, and that is why grab-and-go bags work so well. Well... I think tomorrow I'm going to go down to that thrift store and buy that other Targus bag. And that'll give me another bag to put either the, the Rocket or the Royal Mercury in. Those are the last two remaining Ultra Portables in my collection that don't have a grab-and-go bag. So maybe tomorrow I'll go down and pick up that bag and I'll be a little bit better equipped. But I uh, hope this gave you guys some ideas, some inspiration that... Grab-and-go bags, shoulder bags, laptop computer bags work perfectly with ultra-portable typewriters. It really enhances their utility and their usability. Well, if you guys have any additional questions or concerns, drop them down in the uh, comment below. And uh, until the next time, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.